Hello, I am here for a fun video today. My name is Stacy, and welcome to the Reads of the Apple and we are going to be discussing all of the books that have been announced that I know of for the quarter three. So that is July, August and September 2022 new releases. I've been kind of keeping track of them for a little bit and I enjoy kind of doing these little like wrap ups and doing them quarterly just to kind of see what is coming out. Um, but I should say everything is <laughs> subject to change at the whims of the author and the publishers. I have no sway whatsoever. <clears throat> Last time I posted my quarter two releases video which I'll link up in the cards up here but when I did that I was like this book comes out in June and I'm super excited and the day I uploaded the video it came out early it was like two months early I was like oh my gosh what's happening but anyway let's get to my list I made some fun little <sighs> collections that I can put up on the screen and then I will uh, list all of the releases with their release date as of what I've heard down below. So let us just get into it because I have quite a few options. Um, I should, okay, I should also say too, a lot of the authors more and more that I'm reading are indie authors and a lot of the times they don't announce books until it's like right before release date. Very rarely do you, do I at least, <laughs> at least I see notifications months in advance. So September is a little thin, but there could be a lot more books that end up coming out in September that just have not been announced yet. So I want to just throw that out there. But let's start with the month that is tomorrow, July. So um, I will pull up my copy and just read off of this. So we have the Steminist novella Below Zero. This is the third in this little mini series by Allie Hazelwood. These were released all in audiobook first, and this is the ebook version. So all of the audiobooks came out before they started releasing the ebooks. I still have not read the first two, but I like I really liked the Love Hypothesis, and I'm intrigued to read more by Allie Hazelwood. You'll see her again on this list but I'm excited to now that all three are out to binge them because they're novellas so they should be quick and easy and then also on the fifth as you can see is Lore Olympus volume two I have once again pre-ordered the paperback version of the normal cover and the special edition Barnes and Noble hardback cover because I love Lore Olympus I have not read. I'm not caught up on Webtoon. I like to wait until there's a good chunk and then I will binge what's there. But I am excited for volume two and then I just want to throw out there volume three if you are also interested is also up for pre-order which I've already have pre-ordered that one as well but just throwing that out there. But volume two comes out July 5th. Then on July 12th, we have, this is a re-release. This is Barbarian Lover by Ruby Dixon. This is Ice Planet Barbarians book number three. And this is being published by a traditional publisher and they are all getting new pretty recovers. I've bought the first two. I also have the first eight or nine of the indie version of Ice Planet Barbarians in paperback form. So I like, I like supporting an indie author that is getting noticed publicly. Plus these covers are absolutely gorgeous. So I will collect them. And then Juliet Cross has a new series. I'm not sure what the new series is called, but it's set in Beauville, Louisiana. And book one is Bright Like Wildflower, Wildfire wildfire. I cannot wait. I have an arc for this because I am a member of her Patreon. I need to read this ASAP. I cannot wait to get my claws into it. I am excited. And then the other book coming out on the 12th that I'm super excited for is Beyond My Darkness by R.C. Bolt. I hadn't heard of her before. I This was in just a... I try to check like 
I don't know, once a month, once every few weeks, the most anticipated 2022 romance releases with whatever month it is on Goodreads. It's in the Listopia section. And this was listed for July and I was like, interesting cover. And it's mafia-esque. So she apparently, from what I remember, it's kind of paranormally too. She is working in a morgue or she's in a morgue. She's somehow at a morgue and she accidentally brings one or two people back to life and then goes on the run to hide her powers. And then it's her romance with like a gang leader. <laughs> so it's like mafia-esque. But I'm super intrigued. I love the cover. And, you know, just that little hint of paranormal is always super fun. And then on July 14th, we have A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. Holly Renee does a lot of uh, young adult or new adult books. Um, I read her Rock Bottom series and really enjoyed that trilogy for, but from her. And this is going to be kind of branching out from contemporary. This is an adult fantasy romance, enemies to lovers, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'm very, very intrigued by this. It sounds amazing and I cannot wait to read more from Holly Renee. Okay, then on July 17th, Anastasia by Sophie Locke is supposed to come out. This is going to be a, fant a fantastical retelling of Anastasia. And I know there's supposed to be magic. I'm trying to stay kind of blind to what's going on with it because I want to go in as blind as possible. But I'm a big fan of Sophie Lark and her going into this new genre I'm super excited for. Plus, Anastasia is my name and... It'll be fun to kind of read her, Sophie's take on the Anastasia. I mean, she's a real person, so it's not really a myth, but her story, I guess. And then, 26, the last Tuesday of the month, we have a lot of traditional releases. So, we have A Duchess by Midnight. This is by Karis Michaels. This is her third book in Awakened by a Kiss uh, series. These are all fairy tale retellings. The first one was a Snow White. The second one was a Tinkerbell. And then this one is supposed to be Ariel from The Little Mermaid, if you could not tell by the pretty cover. I have not read them yet, but I am Ariel. The Little Mermaid was my favorite Disney movie growing up, so give me a Little Mermaid retelling any day. And then we have A Remarkable Rogue by Anna Harrington. This is book five in her Lords of the Armory series. I've read the first two. I really liked them. Anna Harrington is a favorite author of mine. She is an auto buy author for me. I really enjoy her. I just have not caught up on this series yet, but I definitely want to. They're definitely unique. Um, I'm not sure kind of how the series, if the series is, has evolved from the first two books, but a lot of the, um, heroes, at least in the first two books, are, like, military veterans. And they're coming back and they, they're, like, creating their own little, like, mercenary, like, detective-y group kind of a thing. And, and they're super fun. I like them. Then the Claimed Among the Stars anthology comes out. This has a whole list of authors. I found out uh, about this anthology because of Annabelle Rex, who's um, a fantasy author or a sci-fi author I found recently who I really enjoyed. And I'm excited. I, I pre-ordered this whenever it went up for like a 99 cent pre-order. I want to say like in September of last year. It's been a really long time, but it's supposed to finally come out on the 26th. I'm very, very excited. I can't remember how many authors are supposed to be in it. And it does not say in the cover, but I think it's like 15 or 20. And then um, also on the 26th is Fire and Rain by Pamela Clare. This is going to be starting a new series for her, Wildest Alaska. She is a favorite author of mine when it comes to romantic suspense, which I have not read in a while, but I loved her uh, 
Colorado High Country series, and I've read most of her iTeam series as well. So I'm excited to read more from Pamela Clare. And this is set in Alaska, which is super fun. I'm assuming it's going to be more paranormal, uh, or not paranormal, romantic suspense, but I'm not 100% sure. But like I said, I for authors like her that I really enjoy, I try to go in as blind as possible. And then we got two more left on this day. And these are just the ones that I saw that have like popped out to me. So The Gunslinger's Guide to Avoiding Matrimony. This is by Michelle McLean. This is the second book in her Gunslinger series, which I did not know was going to be a series when I read the first book, which is Hitch to the Gunslinger, I think. Yeah, Hitch to the Gunslinger. It's kind of in the front of my bookshelf. But I really liked it. I love westerns. I love the modern take on a on like a historical western and just I'm super excited for this one. And I have no idea because I didn't when I read Hitch to the Gunslinger, I was expecting it to be a standalone. And maybe there is a note in the back of the book. I can't remember. It's been a while since I read it. But I I feel like maybe I should reread it. But anyway, I'm super excited for it. And then we have one of the historical romance queens, Lorraine Heath. She is releasing The Return of the Duke. This is in her Once Upon a Dukedom series. This is the third book. I have not started this series yet because I want to read, and I know it's very loosely connecting, but I want to finish the series that connects to this one first. And Lorraine Heath has a really big backlist and I have not been as diligent on her as I have as other people, but I'm still super excited for it. Plus, modern historical rom- like, as you can tell, all of my historical romances that are releasing in July have the old style clinch covers, and give me a clinch cover and I will buy it to support and put my money where my mouth is, that clinch covers are what historical romance readers want. Drop the mic. Okay, well, let's move on to August. All right, so I don't know when this is supposed to come out. Molly, I'm a, a subscriber to Molly O'Hare's newsletter, and she released cover hasn't even been out at this point, but she is going to be writing just a batter of time. This is, I'm assuming, going to be a standalone. She said it's going to be a little more contemporary than rom-com, although it will have humor in it, but it's not going to be rom-com like her other books. And with the name, I'm guessing there's a pastry chef or some sort of type of chef or cook or something in it because just a batter of time but no release date all I know is August is what she said in her newsletter at the beginning of June but no other information has been released as of today um so then for ones that I have release dates for Love in the Time of Serial Killers. This is by Alicia Thompson. I had never heard of her before. This is another book I found on the Listopia list on Goodreads. And from what I understand, she is like a true crime podcast junkie. And she moves to a new house. I don't know if it's a new town or whatever. But she sees her neighbor do something funky and so she's, she's convinced that he's a serial killer and so she's like trying to use her true crime podcast knowledge <laughs> to prove that like he killed somebody or something like that. So it sounds absolutely bonkers and fun and crazy and I'm excited for it. It's a new author, someone I've never heard before, a certainly unique <laughs> pro like idea. So I'm very, very intrigued. And that is August 1st. Then we have August 9th. And this, the first book will be Beauty and the Thief by Shanna Galen. This is uh, the first book in a new series, The Royal Saboteurs. And I mean, it's a beauty and a thief. And the beauty is the male. The Thief is the Woman. If I remember correctly, this book has been pushed back a couple of times. The cover has also changed, which I still like this cover, but I like the other cover a little bit better. But I'm excited. I've read Shannon Galen before. She's another historical author. I have a lot of books on her backlist I want to get to. But I'm very... When I read this 
way back then and originally put it on my TBR list, I was very intrigued by it. And then we have the last book in the Cider Bar Sisters series by Jackie Lau, her unexpected roommate. Oh, I cannot wait. Oh, this is, I want to say Sophie's book, Sophia's book, something like that. And she is my favorite Cider Bar sister. I have been waiting for her book. It's a roommate situation. I love Jackie Lau. I cannot wait. I still have not read book four. I plan to read it before this comes out. I'm sad this series is ending, but I'm also like excited to see what, what something else new she does because I love Jackie Lau. She's one of my favorite contemporary authors. And then we have uh, on the 12th, the Virgin Next Door by Laura Blakely, and this is the first book in her Dating Games series. I read the blurb and was very intrigued by this. Um, if I remember correctly, this I also found in, well, it was in my new releases section because I've read Laura Blakely before. It's been a little bit since I read her, but I read enough for Goodreads to recommend this as a new release for me. But... If I remember correctly, she somehow emails about someone sexy, some guy that she, I don't remember how, but it's bad in a sexual way and she gets fired from her job or something like that. And not like degrading, but she's just like, oh, he's so hot. I'd want to bang him, but with cruder language kind of a thing. And then he ends up being her next door neighbor somehow, or I don't know. It, it's, I don't remember, but I remember reading the blurb and being like, Ooh, that sounds really interesting. I'm more intrigued to pick this up than some of her other series, although I want to read them, but I have so many contemporary authors now, they've completely exploded that Lauren Blakely has kind of ended up going down my list. But this one I was super intrigued by. Plus, I also like, I like it when there are heroines who are older virgins. I just find that very interesting. And it's different when it's like historicals. And I know a lot of people are over virgins. But I feel like there's so much push to being open and not being a virgin that I like when a book pops up and it has an older character who's in her late 20s early 30s who was a virgin because I like I like the dichotomy because not everybody started having sex when they were like teenagers and not everybody felt comfortable for whatever reason religious or just life circumstances or whatever to give it up in college so I don't know I just I like it I'm intrigued and then on the August 22nd, we have Between Despair and Hope. This is by Jess Wisecup. This is the second book in her Divine Between. This is a fantasy romance, and I cannot wait for this book. I saw this talked about uh, at the end of Pharaoh Feb in February this year, and then Jen from the Book Refuge read it and has been touting it, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I love fantasy romance, so I'm like, ooh, new fantasy romance authors. And this will be also her second book ever, so good on her. And then, what well, was an anticipated release for me, but is now kind of cool details a little bit, is Pen Pal by J.T. Geisinger. Now, originally I heard this was a dark romance, and it is a Pen Pal stalker-ish thriller romance, and the hero, hero, is in prison, and when he gets out, he comes to find her. So, but, but... I have since seen on a re on a newsletter from JT that it is not listed as a dark romance anymore. It is listed as like an erotic thriller slash dark romance. And then I've heard, uh, I think it was Jessen mentioned in one of the live shows recently that either she or somebody else saw it in her reader group or in her reader group on Facebook that she's like, it's not a traditional H-E-A. And 
I mean, it has to, if it's a romance, it has to have an HEA, but non-traditional HEAs usually mean, you know, they're not married, they don't have kids, it's not like the stereotypical HEA, so as long as it has an HEA, I'll be happy. So I might not read this as soon as it comes out and wait till I see what other people are saying, if it actually is a romance or not, because I am not a thriller girl, I am not a horror person, I... That is just not my jam. So I will wait until other people read it or I start seeing people like if there's going to be arcs for it and go from there. But I was super excited for it. Now I'm, my expectations are tempered a lot. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to it. And then the last Tuesday of the month. So we've got a lot of our traditional books coming out. We have Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This is the follow-up to her Love Hypothesis series, um, or book, and this they are going to be in the series. At one point I saw it was called the Love Hypothesis series, but it has since just disappeared as being that series title. So I don't know what the title's gonna be or if they're just kind of slightly connected standalones, but there is a teaser at the end of Love Hypothesis for this book and I'm super excited. I, if you've seen what I've been reading lately, I love the nerdy and STEM and science minded, especially when they're female characters. So I'm very excited. And then Ruby Fever, Hidden Legacy 6 by Lona Andrews. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Ugh. July will be the last uh, Sapphire Flames and Emerald Blaze in the Hidden Legacy read-along. And then August we are reading Ruby Fever when it comes out. I cannot wait to get caught up in this series. I am so hyped. And I haven't even started Catalina's books yet, but I am excited. Anything new from Alona Andrews will make me happy. Um, and then we have The Hellion and the Hero. This is book three in Emily Sullivan's Leaks of Scandal. She is a newer author. This will be her third ever published book. Her first book came out in 2020, I believe, and it was A Rogue to Remember. And I really liked that. I have not read the second book in this series yet, but I am excited to read more from her because A Rogue to Remember was an excellent debut book. And then, this is another random find for me on the Listopia list, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is by Sangu Mandana. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. This seems like... It kind of reminded me of the book that everybody was talking about by T.J. Klune. I have not read it. I want to say it was the Cerulean Sea one, but she is a witch and witches are in real life, but they hide their powers and she was never like properly trained or something like that. And so she gets tasked to go to a house and I think she was in London. She was somewhere in Britain and when she gets there, it's basically a school for kids who need to learn how to control their powers or kids that are not able to hide their powers in normal society or something like that. And it's her romance, I think, with the caretaker or the teacher or something like that. But it was, it, it, it sounded super cute and I was very intrigued. Another author I've never heard before give me all the witchy paranormally stuff, especially as we start approaching fall. I'm very intrigued by this. And then we have a YA fantasy, which isn't my general go-to, but this is The Liar's Crown by Abigail Owen. I love Abigail Owen. I love her dragon shifter books. So I'm excited to see how she's going to go with this YA fantasy and I'm excited. There's been a lot of like teasers and stuff posted for it and I'm definitely intrigued. Plus I love this cover. It is gorgeous. And that is it for August. So I'm going to take a drink and then we will get to my shorter list that is September. Okay. 
So on September 6th, we have Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. I have not read Sally Thorne. I know people love The Hating Game in 99% Mine. Um, this is going to be a historical fantasy-ish. It's Frankenstein's younger sister, I think, and she's making herself her own Frankenstein monster. That's all I needed to know. Um, and then we also have Doctor Off Limits by Louise Bay, and this gave me Grey's Anatomy vibes. It's I can't remember if it's the exact same, but it reminded me enough of Grey's Anatomy where she ends up sleeping with someone and then he turns out to be like her, someone that's above her at her new hospital. And I don't know if she's an intern like in Grey's Anatomy or if she's just like a new nurse or something, but somehow he's above her in the hierarchy after they have this like little affair and I'm excited for it. I've heard really good things about Louise Bay. She's been on my TBR for a while. But this will probably be the first book that I pick up by her. And then, this is the net, the third book I have for the sixth is The Decoy Girlfriend by Lily Vale. This is a, if I remember correctly, fake dating celebrity romance. I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay, and then we have a fantasy romance anthology once upon a forbidden desire this comes out on the 13th this was announced during pharaoh feb a lot of pharaoh feb authors are going to be in this book it's been kind of planned by hr moore and i know grace straven is going to be doing like the forward or the like info thing that's in the front. So I'm super excited to read this. I've had this pre-ordered since they announced it in February. And then another book I found on the Listopia list. They're who give me all of these random really cool books that I'm intrigued by. So this is The Makeup Test by Jenny L. Howe. And this is sciency or academia wise she's a plus size heroine and she is a TA or a student professor or something like that and it's her romance with like the professor that's above her if I remember correctly I just kind of glanced at the tropes and I was like "Ooh, that sounds good and then we have on the 20th, A Merry Little Meet Cute. This is the first holiday book of this year that it's on my list, at least Christmas-wise. And this is by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. Sierra Simone writes really good steam, and Julie Murphy writes uh, plus-size uh, contemporary. I haven't read her before. Um, I just know about her because when she had that, like, Cinderella retelling that came out somewhat recently... Uh, I remember that was kind of going around a lot on Bookstagram, but I was intrigued by this. I can't remember what the premise is, but it's Christmas time, meet cute, and I know Sierra Simone can bring the steam, and I'm intrigued to see how this one will play out. Plus, it's always fun to buy new Christmas books. And then Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean. I heard Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life mention this book. I think she's, she mentioned it on Bookstagram. Um, the heroine has a chronic illness that I just lost the name for. Um, but, so that's really cool that it has chronic illness rep. But honestly... The name is what got me. I am a classic movie musical person. Gene Kelly. I mean, it's singing in the rain on the cover. I'm, I'm all about it. I mean, I, Frank Sinatra is above Gene Kelly for me, but I'm just the name and the cover alone. I'm like, okay, sold. I want in. And then I have two more books. And this is the last Tuesday of the month. So we have Arcana by Runix. And this is going to be a prequel set, I think in the 1800s. And this is the prequel to Gothic Hannah, which I read last year for Ravished by Romance Book Club. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely like vibey and creepy. And 
I had no idea what I was getting into and it was definitely unique and so I'm intrigued to, to see what happens here and kind of get some of that backstory. So I'm, I'm intrigued for sure. And then we have How the Wallflower Was Won by Eva Lee. This is the second book in her Last Chance Scoundrel series and I'm just excited for more Eva Lee. That's all I need to know. I have not read the first book yet, The Good Girls. Good Girls? Good Girls Guide to Rakes. It's on my bookshelf. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but apparently I need to get to it by September. So, and that's it for now. Like I said, there probably be a lot more books in September that are coming out, but a lot of indie authors aren't announcing that far yet. So, Hopefully that will kind of start to fill up. But anyway, if you are excited for any of these or you have any books that you're super excited for that are supposed to come out in the next three months, pop them down below. I'm always excited to add more books that I should keep an eye on. And I'm, I'm just excited for new books. Will I get to them all pretty soon? Probably not. But just knowing that there's new books constantly new books coming out for me to pick up and I don't have to pick some pick up something that's years old it's just so comforting to know that we'll never run out of reading material it just makes me happy but anyway I'll stop rambling I will see you all very very soon and I hope the next three months also brings some books that you're very excited for as well I'll see you all soon.